there's no holding. In other words, there's no what's keeping it together. There are no bonds, there are no forces. In one case, you've got strong forces, and in the other case, you haven't. I believe I could have year 10 students understanding that. Does that make sense? Through the actions, through the visualising, I think we could make that very clear. I would be very keen for the students to imagine the situation and say it in other ways. Now, a lot of the things that we've said here, okay, the dry ice disappeared. To me, that was on the way. And I might have a class saying that. Two minutes later, I might be wanting the class not to be saying it disappeared, but it's now in other parts of the room. Two minutes later still, I'm wanting the class to say not only that it's in other parts of the room, it's in other parts of the room because it wasn't held together so strongly. The temperature made it move away. It wasn't held together. In the concrete case, it was held together. Two minutes later still, I'm going to want the children to be commenting on what it would be like being in, inside the dry ice as opposed to being inside the concrete. Does this notion of the understanding make sense? That we allow understanding to evolve over a five minute discussion. If it's important that my science class knows what sublimed means, I need to help them see it as an action. It started off as a solid, it's now a gas. No puddle, no puddle, it's a gas. And we also need to allow the students to talk their way through it. Because if I do that, the children can tell me what sublime meant. And if someone says it, uh, it turned in into a liquid, uh, that's a reasonable guess at this point in time. And I can say, whoops, I should have said, as a teacher, there's no puddle left. That's what I should have said. Now, in the second case, a ball thrown into the air reaches the top of the flight, stops momentarily, but accelerates constantly due to the force of gravity. If I were teaching this, I would get each student to imagine, or if better still, to look at a picture of a ball going up. The fact that the ball at one moment is going up and a bit later is coming down means that it, if it was going up and is now coming down, what must it have done? It must have changed direction. In fact, it's changed direction totally. And if it's changed direction, before it can change direction, what do you have to do in a car? You've got to stop. You're going to go in exactly the opposite direction. So at one point, it stopped. Now, if we think of something falling, when something falls, does it go down at the same rate all the time? Or does it go down like that? The second one, it gets quicker and quicker as it goes. And so what's another word we use for getting quicker and quicker? It, it, accelerates. it accelerates. And so what are we on about here? And so I'm just wanting to make the point that I can teach these concepts these difficult ideas through visualising, through action. I can have students paraphrase them and talk about them. So we're not only talking about ideas with, with children in grade one and grade two. It's equally appropriate with difficult <coughs> physics concepts. But unless I actually explore, if I, if I, do, I need to allow the students to gradually build their understanding. I trained as a secondary school teacher and after five or six years I went to teach in special schools and I learned a whole lot more about learning. And then I went to work at the children's cottages for a few years and I learned a whole lot more still about learning. And as a secondary teacher, I probably wasn't in the 60s, you weren't all that well set up for understanding particularly how children who had different ways of learning went about learning. And at that point, I was just starting to uh, study psychology. And I remember uh, learning about Piaget. And one of the greatest things for me in learning uh, about Piaget was Piaget's idea 
that thinking involves mental actions. And the second thing was that mental actions are learnt through physical actions. And that was a real revelation for me. When I went back to the special school, I had the ladder. And if I wanted the children to work out six plus two, we started off by putting the little doll on the sixth step that was labelled, and the kids actually took the two steps up. And then bit by bit, we obscured the ladder, and the kids did more in their minds. And lo and behold, these intellectually disabled kids could do things that they weren't supposed to be able to. They could think abstractly, because we taught the action, and they went through. When I went back to teaching kids in year nine how to factorise, we used exactly the same thing. We taught the factorising action, how to act factorising, and then we talked about it in symbols. When I, went, when I was teaching children in year 12 how to do calculus, we did the action first. When I talked about teaching kids about the uh, gradient of straight lines, we all made a line that had a negative gradient. We all made a line that had a positive gradient. I got the kids to, last year. I was teaching year 10 class at, um, uh, at um, anyway, at Orbos Secondary College to demonstrate circles. And, and I had uh, one of the kids tell me how he'd walk to make a circle. There's the rubbish bin. How would you walk so that you make a circle? Where would you go? Where would your next step go? How would you tell where to put your next step? And suddenly the kids could see how a circle is going to be defined. What are we on about with our literacy? Actions. If I teach the actions and then have the kids talk about them, they're going to learn them. I think in terms of, of this message, it's a really critical idea that we need to convey to our colleagues. That if we're wanting children to learn new ideas, often we need to make the physical action really tangible. I say to a grade four child, you've got to be responsible. The child may not in fact know what actions constitute being responsible. And so I then need to say to the child, tell me what you'll do. When you're being, when you're doing responsible, when you're doing respect, what are you doing? What are the actions? If I have that dialogue, the children are more able to link ideas and do what they need to do. We really need to communicate through actions. And it, I guess in response to this email, I think it was really great that the, the person even bothered to share the ideas with the colleague who's here. I think that, that was really great. And I think we need to think through how is knowledge built about any concept, whether it be about how earthworms breathe or whether it be about things to do with acceleration due to gravity. We need to think about how the idea is going to be learned first through actions. And if you want to get an example of that, think of all of us learning to drive or learning to hit a golf ball for the first time or trying to teach someone else how to drive. In a car with gears, in a car with, um, that's not automatic, a manual, doing the handbrake start. Think of how we need to do the actions <coughs> to get the idea in our mind. Any concepts that are so abstract that we can't actually concretize? You give me 